In this video, we're gonna be making some pretty nice pad sounds within FL Studio. We're gonna be using Citrus, and it's gonna sound like this. What's up my producer friends, it's David with anothermonsterproductions.com. So today we're back with another Citrus sound design tutorial. If you're not familiar, Citrus is a stock FL Studio plugin that comes with all versions of FL Studio from the producer edition onward. So as long as you have at least the producer edition, you'll be able to follow along with everything in this tutorial. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so the first thing that you wanna do when you have Citrus loaded up is go up here, click this button, go down to where it says presets, and let's go to default. This is gonna get us a default sine wave, which sounds like this. All right, cool. So um, the next thing that I wanna do is where you actually see the sine wave, let's right click on this and then go to saw. And that's gonna get us a sawtooth wave. And the next thing that I wanna do is go to my main tab here. And you see over here where it says ORD, this is the amount of voices. And so I wanna bring this all the way up to nine. So that's basically getting us a super saw. So right here where it says VL, that's unison volume, it should be at 75% and we're gonna leave that alone. Right here, PT, this is unison pitch. Let's bring this up to 70%. Next to that we have our SB, which is sub level. Let's bring this all the way up to 100%. And next to that we have our PH, which is unison phase. We'll also bring that up to 100. So everything else should be good for now. Uh, let's go ahead and go back into our OP1 operator one. And the next step is just sort of shaping the way we want the attack to case sustain release to sound for this pad that we're creating. So let's go down here, make sure that we're in our operator one, uh, volume is highlighted and envelope is highlighted and we'll click to enable it by clicking that button there. And then we'll just kind of shape this the way that we want it Something kind of like this should be pretty good. Uh, and then you can kind of experiment with it to find what you like. We can also click tempo if you want to link it to the tempo. Um, so yeah, well, let's just play with it a little bit and see what we can come up with. So all this stuff is kind of personal preference. Feel free to sort of experiment with it and adjust it to your liking, but something kind of along these lines is probably gonna be what you're shooting for. Uh, we could also move this down, uh, adjust that a little bit, just give it a little bit more slope. For this tutorial, I think that's perfect. All right, so the next thing that I wanna do is add a filter on here. And in order to do that, let's take a look at our matrix. And you see down here where it says F1, this is gonna be our filter one. So we'll go ahead and turn that up and then make sure it's going out of the matrix there as well. We can take this down up here and that should sound like this. So now we can go into our filter and kind of look at what we actually have going on here. Uh, so by default, we have this state variable filter and you can kind of see the settings that it has. The cutoff is at 50% right now. We can turn this all the way up if we wanted or down. And right now it's set to low pass filter mode, um, which is why it, you know the cutoff controls a, basically a low pass filter. So what I'm gonna do is go to our cutoff section here and we're gonna be an envelope and I'm, I'm gonna enable the envelope and then we're gonna basically do a similar thing to what we did uh, before when we were shaping the volume and the sort of attack decay sustain release. So I'm just gonna get in here and kind of mess with this until I like the way it sounds. So again, this is all personal preference stuff and you guys feel free to adjust this to your liking. So the next thing that I wanna do is actually add some effects on here. 
So uh, back to our matrix, let's bring this up and then we'll go to our effects tab. And what I wanna do is add some reverb. Uh, by default, we have a chorus. Actually, it sounds pretty cool. Uh, that may be something you wanna experiment with, but for now, I'm gonna bring this down to zero and that's just gonna eliminate the chorus there. Uh, so you can see all these different things are different delays and then the R is reverb, so we can turn that on. And uh, not really a huge fan of the default settings, so let's kind of experiment with this. This HD is high damping. I'll bring this down a little bit. Let's go down to like uh, 2K Hertz. Let's bring this DE, which is decay, up to about five seconds. All right, so that sounds pretty cool. Let's mess with the diffusion. We'll bring this down a little bit. Yeah, I think I like that better. All right, so I think that's pretty good for now. Uh, let's go ahead and go back into our operator one. And this is kind of uh, not really a necessary step, but I think it's, it's kind of cool. It's something you can do to add just a little bit of flavor. So we're gonna go to, to our pitch and LFO. We're gonna enable it and let's delete these points here. We'll just get rid of this stuff and then we'll bring this up to about there. Uh, we can link it to the tempo and I'll just drag this back a little bit and then I can adjust the speed to basically have it on the grid here. So right there seems pretty good and you can kind of hear this is linked to the pitch envelope. So you can kind of hear that pitch moving. This is the pitch envelope knob and we're just gonna bring this down to about 20 cents. So you may be able to hear what's happening there. It's just giving this just touch of analog flavor to the sound, just a little bit more character. I mean, you may not even notice it, like the average person's probably not gonna notice it, but to me it makes a big difference. And obviously you can adjust the amount of pitch envelope. So, you know, we could bring it up to like 40 cents or something like that if you wanted to. Um, I'm gonna leave it at 20 cents for this tutorial. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on. So another thing that we can do here is adjust the wave shape. So if we bring this down, right now we have kind of just like this really full lush synth wave pad almost, but if we bring the wave shape down to a triangle wave, we can get almost more of like uh, a string pad sound. So that can definitely be cool to play with. We could even actually go down to a sine wave, which is gonna give it more of like a choir sound. So I really like that sound a lot. Feel free to go in here and experiment with any of these different parameters that we went over in this tutorial. Uh, you know, make these pads your own, make your own sounds, come up with your own sort of variations of them and just play around with citrus, have fun with it. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.